Hi, Mike Sarah here from Customer States. If you're searching for the highest quality additives, lubricants, or cleaners for your automotive, heavy equipment, agricultural, or industrial machinery needs, look no further than the Justice Brothers line of products. From lubing your chainsaw, performing a complete fuel system treatment and decarb service on a customer's vehicle, keeping that forklift forking and lifting, or just need a can of that famous JB80 penetrant to persuade a rusty bolt, Justice Brothers has you covered. Travis Ferris of Hit Distributing is not only Southern California's authorized Justice Brothers distributor, but also a great friend of mine. Over the years, Travis has helped me and my dealership with anything and everything we need, including all the lines of Justice Brothers products and even equipment to perform the various services we may need for our specific application. HIT stands for Honesty, Integrity, and Trust, so you know when you contact Travis, that's exactly what you'll get. That, combined with Justice Brothers supplying superior quality automotive products since the 1940s and 75 years in the racing industry, you will have absolutely everything at your disposal to get the job done. Justice Brothers is proudly made in the USA, and they have a satisfaction guarantee or your money back. Justice Brothers has the best quality products over any other competitor, and they'll gladly tell you that themselves. If you live in the Southern California area, call my man, Travis Ferris, at 805-208-7818. And if you don't, call him anyway and tell him I said thanks. And visit justicebrothers.com to learn more about their complete line of products. Justice Brothers, America's brand for quality. Hello, welcome back to another fantastic edition of Customer States Podcast, where we talk about everything, almost everything, in the automotive industry. Um, I'd like to thank you guys for joining us again. And um, before we get started, I would like to crack open a beverage, please, oh, fuck yeah, bust it. if you don't mind. Oh my god. Uh, today's drinks are brought to us by Albert. Yes, they are. Thank you, Albert. Thank, Thank you, you, Albert. Ooh. Thank you, Albert. Thanks, Albert. We'll, we'll we'll get to a story about that in a little bit. Yes. My name is Mike Sarah. Hello. I do lots of things with the automotive industry, and I've been doing it for a very long time. Hello. Hello. Um, to my <laughs> left is Eric Montenegro. Hello. <laughs> What's up, bitches? Uh, What's it's, up? It, it's me, Eric Montenegro. I'm um, a technician <laughs> for CDJR. Yeah, been doing it now for a uh, better part of three months. Yeah, things are going good. I am the unofficial diesel transmission technician. I'm a bitch. I am also that. Me too. And to my izquierda, oh, is la bonita, <gasps> la preciosa. Mm -hmm. Do la you feel bonita? Princesa. I feel bonita. El Rojo de Pelo. Good, because you look bonita. <laughs> Alerpo. Hi, guys. Alerper. It's me, Hi. Allie. Alerper. I'm a warranty administrator. I've been doing it for 13 years. I feel like you've been saying that for the past year. And, well. Like, how many times have you had your 22nd birthday? Seriously. That's none of your business. 10 times. Allie's 34. I am. Did I tell you guys that I have my 34th birthday on March 4th? 34? It was her golden 34? birthday. Oh. But it wasn't. It's like a weird golden birthday. That's cool, though. Yeah. Wait, I, what? what? Yeah, because your golden birthday is when you, like, you're the same age as the day Eight. you were born. Yeah. So, like, oh, I had I my golden birthday when I was four. The day you're born oh. is, like, the 27th, and you turn 27 exactly. on the 27th. So, mine, mine was, was the 24th. Mine Everybody was the 25th. gets one. So we've all had our golden birthdays at this point. Yep. It'll be pretty hard to be born on the 87th of some month. So, yeah. It's just like the following. <laughs> <month>. <laughs> um, yeah. So Volkswagen and Mazda. Jake, what do you do? Hi. It's Jake Rikes. That's me. Hi. Hi, Hello, everybody. Jacob. Hello. How are you all doing? Hello. I'm tired. Peachy keen. I'm tired, too. I'm a service advisor. I've been demoted from an assistant service manager. I'm now back to a... Pen, punching bag. Uh, chair swiveling, pen pushing, punching bag. Wait. 
Wait, what? Well, oh. with the previous company. So is is that going to be part of the subject up there? It can be. Yeah. Can, do you mind? No, not at all. Okay. But let's not go there yet. Of course not. But I'm there. We have to already. arrive at the same time. Because oh, we're going to start with. Because we're going to start with gas cap or fact. Mm. <laughs> gas cap or fact. Uh, so I my like this topic. Check engine light has been annoyingly come coming on and off. No, I'm uh, coming. Even after I had it diagnosed by a professional dealership and it still came back on. That was a jab. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. Uh, hey, stop those air quotes. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Michael. Um, anyways, <laughs> when I took it in for the check engine light, I was told that it, the, I left the gas cap off. I'm like, oh, f- I don't do that. And they're like, no, really, it just fell off. I'm like, the fuck it did. Anyways, whatever, I left it. <clears throat> the light came on again like a month afterwards i was like fuck i went and checked my gas cap and it was loose I'm like what the fuck so i text jacob this morning i was like can you get me a gas cap please i'm sick of this fucking light because it came back on again and so he brought me the gas cap which by the way 50 fucking dollars you couldn't have bought a stant gas cap 50 from fucking for dollars. 23 dollars that's not the fucking point it my car is a 2004 yep Fifty fucking dollars for a gas cap for my car, and that's employee cost. And you, yeah, you're probably the type of person that would buy Ford factory lug nuts for your 04 Focus. Yeah, I would. And what? Because then those nuts are gonna swell. No, they're no not. Mods. No, no they're mods. Not. No mods. No mods allowed. Eric, I think no you, mods allowed. She's really testing this friendship. I think your Lexus is perfect. <clears throat> Thank you, Jacob. Um. Anyways, so. You brought me the gas cap when I we did. when we uh, arrived at Ooh. Michael's house. Did you get the boom boom shrimp? Oh yeah. <laughs> and um, I went to go install it in front of you. You witnessed yes. the whole goddamn thing. I was there. You were there as well. I watched him stick it in and twist it. I did. I stuck it in Giggity. and twisted take it. Take it, twist it. <laughs> take it, take it, twist it. <laughs> and so I decided to give it a tug to make sure it was on. <laughs> it writes itself. And. It's just, yeah, oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> and it just came off. I'm like, this is a brand new cap. What the fuck? And so I had to it keep... It was clicking, though. And it clicked. What, the cap portion got stuck in the filler neck no. but, the, but the top part no. of it? No. no. So I'm getting there. Okay, sorry. So I, I twisted it until it clicked like three or four times, and then I pulled on it, and it just came out of the filler neck. I'm like, what the fuck? So I put it back in there, and I twisted it, and this time it locked in place. I'm like, huh, that's weird. So I undid it. And I did it again, and it, again, it just popped out after it clicked. So I'm assuming it's something with a filler neck. I don't fucking know. Are but the, is, Are, like, the threads on the filler neck fucked up? or no threads. It's, it's, like top or something. it's, there, it's it a group filler neck. It spins neck. in and, and ratchets down. It's obviously, obviously threads into something. It doesn't thread in. It's it Okay, so it's got three it's, stoppers or a groove or something like that. It's got grooves, yeah. but the grooves are fine. I, I don't fucking understand. Anyways, it's fucking stupid, so I have to check it, like, two or three times now every time I fill up. That I just... It's, but the fi- the thing is, is that the filler neck like doesn't even look. No, no. I don't see up. anything physically wrong with it at all. When's the next time you have to smog it? I just smogged it last. Oh, month. thank God! So yeah. three three years you got to two worry years. about it. Two years. It's every two years. Two years. What? what is three? Years? It's every two years. <laughs> Dos. Dos años. Yeah. Today um, I learned. Today I learned that I work for a real dealership <clears throat> now. You Today. Do? Well, about a month ago. Congratulations. But they don't fuck around. Good. And it's it is very good. It is a big adjustment though, just because it's not that like we don't want to work hard and we don't want to do it the way they want us to do it, but so many things are different. And you really yes. realize how many things like we already knew that there were some issues in the previous corp. Of course, mm. of course. Yeah. But with the if new one, it it's that. like yeah, no should. Wow. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Dang, like stuff we were doing, I didn't even know it wasn't supposed to be done that way. Either uh-huh. done that way, or that there was a better way to do it, or more efficient yeah. way to do it, or something like that. Yeah. But it does make me miss the old system. I'll tell you that. <laughs> a lot easier. I well, do not you like get, CDK compared to this new to this, system. Until you get used to this. It's true. And that that <clears> might <throat> be true, but I will tell you that for accounting, 
it the the amount of steps is double and wait, to I'm, do something. I'm sorry, you're on CDK right now for your DMS, right? Yes. Okay, because I think you said you had said that you don't like CDK compared to this new system. But uh, you were in, vice, on some old, vice versa, yeah, you were on the, a different D, uh, DMS system before. She Which prefers is PBS. Funny because <laughs> I know CDK is like the the most like hip and up to date system. Oh, dude! All the kids are talking about super it. Super not. Because we did this same system 13 years ago when it was ADP, and it's like the the claim screen is the fucking same. All of the commands, everything broke, is the it. fucking mm. same. It is broke because you can't see everything all at once. Allie, why don't you, you tell us how you really different... feel? I am, and that's why this yeah, podcast know. exists. And you guys have to fucking listen. This is to a me. safe a safe place. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I appreciate that. Yeah, it's a safe place. So, and off of that. With the whole takeover and everything going on, the as an update, <clears throat> pardon, bless you. the mm. the way that, the way that everything is going is slowly getting better. As Joe has been saying for about the past week and a half, he sees the light at the end of the tunnel. He just doesn't know if it's an oncoming train. <laughs> so, <laughs> oh, okay, well, that's fair. Yeah. So, <laughs> and this is one of your leaders, leaders. As Joe says, Joe who? Said co-worker. Like, Joe Mama. Like, oh, like, oh. One of, like one of my co-workers, one of the writers. Oh, I was about to say, like, is this like like one of the managers is like, no. oh, there's a light at the end of the tunnel. I just don't always, you know. No. <laughs> so, <laughs> That's bleak. Um, <laughs> I've got a pretty good hold on CDK already because yeah. they're having me train everybody. Oh. So there's that. The dumb leading the blind. Fair. Oh. That's rude. Jacob and accurate. Not done. <laughs> dumb. That's what I said. Jacob's uh, not dumb. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Uh, mm. So I've been working a lot. I'm not done. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> there, was, there was silence. I was filling it. Um, the other thing is we have a we have a new writer that started Monday, and he used to work at the old dealership 15 years or 15 years ago. No longer. Long uh, time like ago. in the eighties, oh, like before we were born. When it was Mitsubishi. Oh. Mitsubishi. That yep. is a very long time ago. Mm -hmm. Yes. So there's that as an update. The techs are starting to get a better handle on writing tickets. Warranty is still a little wonky because they're still learning how to just start to clock in for one warranty line and then be done with that the and move on to the next. And the amount of action yeah. plans that I have to do to not get audited on these things do you are do you mind if not. i if i recommend you to to uh just like casually talk to sam on the weekend or something like that i already told her that yeah. okay let me tell you something though you guys do ford we no but but as far as the ford? your warranty System policies and how it runs and whatnot is all basically the same and your warranty policies and now the ways that you're supposed to be clocking in and out of tickets on the new yeah. dms is the same Every manufacturer is like that. But I've seen your guys' screens. Like, it's more optimized to Ford. Like, Ford and CDK are, like, the bestest of friends. I don't usually make house calls, but I don't mind coming by and seeing if it looks the same. And maybe I can help you with something if, if you, you know. Oh, delusional. my God. Perhaps I will. What? Speaking of house calls. Oh, <laughs> Is this our trip to Simi Valley? Yes. So, you know what? We're going to still... Spill the tea, girl. Spill we're, the tea. We're going to stay on top of... Yes! <laughs> yeah! I love that for you. Yeah. 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 We're going to stay yeah. on the <laughs> the topic of the, the takeover update. Not to da. So, what about <laughs> yesterday? Yeah. <laughs> so, I'm so the, sorry. <laughs> the new guys that we have, two of the new Lubies, during the first week, because... We didn't plan accordingly. It's not their fault. They didn't have the proper tools. Mistakes were made. Go fucking figure. You don't set somebody up properly. You set them up for failure. Either way, the we had a couple of cars that we caught that a couple of the lug nuts were not tightened down properly. Ooh. So you were getting slight road noise. It's the wheel bearings were floating inside of the hub or because it wasn't tight. And that's the, you yeah, heard the... Nothing is <laughs> fucked here. Nothing oh, is fucked. April's was like that. So, yeah. Huh? April's was like that. April's? Yeah. April. Like, like April, April? April, April, April. Yeah, remember when I came over there to visit with Tiffany and she was having that problem and you're like, oh, we just retorqued the wheel lug nuts. 
April's? It was, yeah, because yeah, her car, no, it wasn't the wheel lug nuts. It was the rock shield. Yeah, April's was something different. Oh, you said it was the lug nuts. Did I? Oh, yeah, okay, either way. Um, yeah, the rock shield <laughs> lug nuts. Anyways. So, any case, so hey, we missed one. And a customer got the car all the way home, Ooh. and it wasn't making bad enough of a noise for her to hear it over the road noise until she was very close to her house, and mm -hmm. then it got very noticeable. Mm -hmm. She got it home, and she took it to a friend who is a mechanic, whatever fuck. the fuck you want to <laughs> call it. The dealership <laughs> fuck you. They're trying to kill you. Exactly, and found that three out of the four tires were not torqued to spec. So after that was all done, she called us. Oh, he used his his twenty year old Harbor Freight torque wrench that he bought at a garage sale to, to tell you that. That's right. great, awesome. So she calls us that. and she says, "Hey, I don't feel comfortable driving the car until I get it checked, etc., cetera, etc." Cetera. Um, I had a friend who checked this. This was the problem that he found. So we get the we go. Okay, no problem. We'll pay for a tow. We'll get it here. It's fine. So I call a local tow shop that is very popular around here, mm -hmm. and they decide to severely drop the ball and blatantly fuck us by after I called them, and we've used them for years, and they handle all over the fucking place. Yeah. And I called and said, hey, this is the customer, this is the address, this is the call, or car, excuse me, I'll have a PO for you, please pick it up and get it to me ASAP. They said, no problem, we got you covered. I come to find out that they call the customer an hour later, and go, we don't drive to your location, which is Simi. Wonderful. What? Yes. So we do not do pickups in Simi Valley. Call the dealership. You'll have to figure somebody or Fantastic. figure something else out. So I call another local tow company that is actually based out of Simi Valley. And I call them. <laughs> we don't drive to, to your area. <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> and I go, look, guys, so-and-so says that they don't pick up from see me and the dispatch manager very nice lady goes that's fucking bullshit <laughs> she's like we share 50 percent territory with that company here los angeles and everywhere in between it's not a small company and yeah. and she's like yeah. the other contract that we share is with ventura county sheriff mm -hmm. so they're like that is bs they go all over the place i'm like i know they picked me up in yeah. see me yeah so either way, so he's got a bad dispatch that day, or somebody was grumpy. Or well, that. yeah. Well, so after I called the second company, and she goes, "I've got everything set up for you. Don't worry." She apparently left for the day. About fifteen minutes after that, the dispatch was never given to somebody, so it <gasps> went another day. Oh fuck! With no tow. Yeah. So the customer calls again, and I first off, I go, "I'm so sorry, but with all due respect, why didn't you call us?" I'm like, if there was something wrong and you didn't get that call or the tow didn't show up, why you should have called me immediately. I'm like, because the tow company was call, like calling me saying, hey, we contacted her. She said, everything's good. We'll be there an X amount of time. So why did, but, after that didn't happen, why didn't you say right, something immediately? So third time's the charm. I call them. I get the same lady, thankfully, that was from the other day. Mm. And she goes, I'm sorry, what happened? And she freaked out. She goes, oh, my God, I'm so sorry. I got a call from the customer five minutes after hanging up that phone and that the tow truck was already there. Oh, wow. So they went Were quick. they, like, next door? <laughs> They're pretty close to her address is okay. where they dispatch. But either way, it was like five, ten minutes, and she said the car's on its way. We inspect it. Everything's good to go. I call the customer. I say, hey, the car's all done. She goes, oh, okay. And she's like, uh, uh, you know, I can come pick up the car. I'm like, it's fine. I'm going to deliver it for you. Mm. It's like, as soon as I'm off of work, I will drive the car up to you. I'd like to put that test drive in anyways, even though I knew it was going to be completely fine. So go get in to see me. Her, more insult to injury, where her house is oh my. <laughs> on the main drag heading in to see me. You make a right on this street, it is like a, a wall and her fucking house. And it's like, make a right now! Oh my God. And it's like, you've got traffic behind you, yeah. all types of shit. So I missed it. Allie missed it when she was following behind me, but I get it into her driveway. Someone didn't, well, you called me when I yes. was already like turning around, to come oh, back. So I get it into her driveway, go up to the front door, knock. I say, hey, everything is good. We're really sorry. We put a discount on your, or we put a credit yeah. on your account. For if the you, next time. If you, you give in. us another chance, this you can use it anytime you would like. Yeah. 
And after all of that, and she goes, oh, okay, I really appreciate you're awesome. We laughed. She was much better. You know, there's only so much she can yeah. do. And then she looks at me with a straight face and she goes, would you like me to drive you back to the dealership? Ah! I'm like, you're sweet. But in my head, I'm going, why the fuck did I drop this off? Right. Yeah. Oh my God. And I go, no, my, my wife's right behind me and she'll be here in a second. That's but so mean. wife, wife. Bye -bye. Bye -bye. <laughs> so it all's well that ends well, but it was a mission way too much hassle for what it should have been. Oh my and I'm God. very upset at that one tow company. Yeah. You should call them and give them a piece of your mind. Yeah. And you're going to, uh, hey, Kara, and leave them a scathing Yelp review. Yeah. And for the 20 ish minute tow, it was $210. Oh, yeah. They, Jesus. Yeah. Oh. Well, actually, so we, we, with our towing company, we kind of have a sort of flat rate for anything that's relatively local, which is like this. That's typical with the first seven one. That's miles. why we fucking called them first because it's like fucking 60 bucks. Yeah. Well, maybe but no. Right. Yeah. Either way. Cost and the other, thing, the other thing too is is like, you know, when the tow truck drivers come in, you know, they're always busy and you get to They're like, also idiots. Well, yes, they are well Yes. They're often <sighs> pretty good looking though. Oh, I what? will agree with you on that. What? Yep. I'm with her. Oh. Uh, yeah. What, okay. Are you getting Australian ex firemen tow truck drivers oh, coming in? Oh well, is that a specific company? Give me their number. Yeah, I don't know, but that's what you're describing to me. Mm. It's called that's Hitched just my from Down Under. I think that's your fantasy. <laughs> it's called Hitched from Down Under. <laughs> 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 Hashtag sell the bell. You and on <laughs> to the next subject. TM, TM, TM. Mm. What is the next subject? What is B plus E plus adding? Oh. Uh, I don't know if we talked about this last time. This is uh, breaking and entering plus adding. No. <laughs> no? Breaking and entering plus but adding. But adding. I'm interested about the adding. I am I thought we talked about this last time. We so did I had a, Do so not we believe did. so. We had a customer that came in with uh, like an expedition, I think it was. And um, she was talking about how she wanted to have like completely new keys and like a new lock code for the like, you know, the door, uh, the, the, the door uh, key code and stuff like that. And we were trying to explain to her, it's like, you know, we can reprogram, like we can cut you new keys for everything, replace everything. And we can, you know, uh, uh, reprogram in a new code. But unfortunately, this factory code is always going to be still in there. You can't delete that code from there without replacing the entire module, which is like ridiculous. What is what is your you know, what's the problem with it? And it's like, well, I, I think somebody has the, the key code to my vehicle like. What? Well, like somebody's like stalking you. She's like, well, I just like, I, I don't know how to explain it, but like, you know, I go into my car and there's like, like things have been moved around and like, sometimes, you know, I, I know I didn't put anything in there, but then there's stuff in there. And then like one time I came in, there's like Skittles and like M&Ms on the seat and, you know, papers <laughs> around and, you know, like, the I other, know where this is going. So, and, and then the other, like the, the other time, like I went in there and there was like $5 in center consoles. Like I never carry cash with me. Like I was telling my boyfriend, like, who's doing this to me? Like I, I never carry cash. Why would I have a cash in here? Blah, blah, blah. And so I'm, you know, it's first thing in the morning, I'm listening to this conversation. And the, like the first thing <clears> out of <throat> my mind is like, this is your boyfriend playing a prank on you. <laughs> and then she's telling me, she's like, she's like, well, no, like we have two ring cameras set up, like one by the front door and one by the garage. And like, even the ring cameras don't get, you know, don't pick anything up. I'm like, so, so who else, you know, and now I pitch and I'm like, so who else has access to these ring cameras? Well, it's just me. It's like through my phone. I'm like, so your, your boyfriend doesn't have access to your phone at all <laughs> or know your passcodes whatsoever. You're like no, ending no, he a relationship. No. <laughs> it, it, it gets a little better. So, um, and I, I started explaining to her, it's like, you know, I'm, you know, she, we were talking about like, I don't think that you need a mechanic. I think that maybe you need a priest or something because like there's a poltergeist, <laughs> you know, adding like nobody's going to get, get into your car and add things into your car. Yeah. Like if somebody's going to break into your car, money. it's with the intent to, to remove something, either the physical things inside of it or the vehicle itself. So like nobody's adding things into your car. Like that just doesn't typically happen normally. Right. And I explained Normally. to her how, like, I said that if I had a girlfriend that I wanted to play a prank on, I would do this exact same thing. I'd just be, like, real still in the front yard and, like, move only, like, a little bit at a time, all in black until I got into the car because <laughs> I knew the entry code. And, like, you know, I know that you don't carry cash and I know that you don't eat trail mix, but I'm going to put a bag of trail mix and $10 in the center console and mess with you. And so I, I, I started explaining this to her and apparently the dude was outside. So, like, I, then I got, like, a little embarrassed because I was like... 
listen, I'm not, I'm not making fun of you at all, but you have to realize how, how this like sounds from like our point of view. We hear yeah. people talking about, you know, like somebody, somebody broke into my car and you know, they stole the car and blah, blah, blah. I've never, ever heard of somebody coming in and adding candy, <clears throat> toys, and money. Like, that. just, like, it's, <laughs> it's, it's not like a child's bank, you know? It's, right. it's so, um, then the boyfriend comes in, and I said, hey, man, props, dude. He's like, what are you talking about? And then the wife starts telling him what I was telling her about how he's, you know, I think that it would be a hilarious prank. He's like, that would be a good prank, but I'm telling you, like, you know, it, it, uh, it, this isn't, you know, I'm not doing it. And then one of the other service providers says, just give it up, dude. Just give it up. We all know. <laughs> <laughs> and so we're all busting up laughing. And I, and I told her, I said, so like, I mean, if you have the ring camera, like, is there a garage that you can put it in? No. Uh, is there anywhere else that you can park the vehicle? No. Have they ever taken anything out of the vehicle? Have you ever found anything missing? No. I said, okay, get a different style of camera. Or or find some way to like you put know, a dash cam motion yeah. detector. Well, we, 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 had, we had talked about that. Like you know, you you could hang a GoPro from your rafter in the garage, and if your boyfriend knows about it, and this thing's still happening, and you have a sudden timestamp missing from the GoPro, then you know it's him. Or if the perpetrator who's adding money and candy to your car doesn't know about you the GoPro. The, the, ki- the kind being that's yeah. leaving you money and candy? I'm not inviting this to happen, but I wish somebody would leave me money and candy in my truck every morning. Can you imagine how much better would, like your drive to work in right. the morning would be? Like, yeah. Oh my gosh, a kind bar. Yeah. How amazing. <laughs> that was so kind of them. Oh, see. So we had a lot of fun with that. Um, I don't ever really remember what, yeah, what like, became of that because I think like she hasn't come back in yet, but I, I think that we had talked her out of like trying to spend like thousands of dollars to like Rekey her car and it, her her boyfriend totally seemed like the sort of dude that would do this sort of thing. So, <laughs> like I almost wanted to come up to to him like this like afterwards and be Aside. like she's not looking like dude. So, <laughs> fit yeah, the bill dude, yeah fit the bill um so that was a lot of fun that was a lot of fun well, that's funny and again this was like 6 58 in the morning we opened the gates at 6 55 because we technically open at seven but people complain because we're open at seven, but the gates aren't open yet, and they can't stack actually inside of the dealership. Mm. So, yeah. I hate that crap. Yeah, you guys operate, and that's what we do. We open up the the drive, but we keep the service drive door closed until we open. So it's one of my favorite things to watch customers come up and pull Try the handle and go door. like, oh it, my it's, God. it's like the Walking Dead, yes. it's like smacking up. <laughs> <laughs> service my car. Instead of, just, instead of like streaming brains, bra- so oil chip ch- waiter. <laughs> this waiter. should be covered under warranty. Yes. Loner, loner, yeah. You did it for free last time. <laughs> no, instead of being brains, it should be brains. There you go. That's very good. <laughs> Mike laughed. That's all that matters. Uh, that's a pretty low bar. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> so, speaking of low bar, um, I got past. <laughs> I got past. <laughs> Me. I got passed up again for a managerial position. We talked about it. We did. Mm. Didn't we? No. No, we were going to. I asked him if it okay. was okay that if we talked about it. Okay. So I got passed up again. Um, my buddy Alex got service director, so he is now service manager for the VW side rude. and the Mazda side, and I have technically been stripped of my assistant manager title assistant as well. Assistant to the manager. Yes, assistant to the assistant service manager's manager. Um, so I got that stripped from me again, which I'm, I got to admit, I'm pretty bummed because, you know, I, 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 I'd like to think that I helped Alex a lot. And busted my ass. And unfortunately, it was taken from me again. So it sucks and it hurts and it's fucking yeah. shitty. I'm sorry. Um, you know, Alex always says, you know, to it's like I'm his right hand man type of thing, but that only goes so far. It's like I appreciate the sentiment, I guess, but at the exact same time, it doesn't get me anywhere. So, um, did, so did it come with a reduction in, in pay or pay te- to scale or anything like that? Technic- no? Technically speaking, I don't even quite understand how my pay works i i that's a good really way no to nobody do. nobody really understands i from how i understand it i need about three bits. I, <laughs> i've got the capability to make more money 
I don't know if that's going to happen, especially because of how our prices increase so you're, much. You're still and production based though, right? Yeah. As as an just purely an, uh-huh. as an advisor. Yeah. Yeah. So, but you did you sign you signed a new pay plan? I did. Right. I did. And what did what did those numbers say compared to what your old one was? I mean, you don't have to say the exact numbers, but like, were they higher or lower or the same? Like I said, uh, there's a there's per, a, a percentage and a dollar there, amount. And... There's a I have no base. I'm 100 percent commission, hmm. which blows. Um, but like I said, oh, I, I'm sorry, you I, have to work. Oh, fuck off. Oh. <laughs> what would you know about that, huh? Nothing. I don't know anything about that. Thank you. You're welcome. So I've got the potential to make more money. But at the same time, it's going to be difficult because we've got growing pains. I've got no fucking guarantees. Yeah. I'm going to touch on this later about, you know, I'm also paid or there's a percentage or a bonus percentage for customer surveys because we're new and there's all types of shit. My surveys are fucked and I will go into this. Pricing went up like crazy. We went from eighty nine ninety five for an oil change to one twenty nine ninety five, and we went from one nineteen ninety nine with a tire rotation to one eighty nine ninety five. It's, oh. it's, that is that is the hardest thing for customers. Like I've been coming here for twenty years, yes. and it's always mm-hmm. been like this. Correct. Well, unfortunately. I, I, I understand, and listen, but listen, even Trader Joe's <laughs> had to charge more on the building, their wine. Okay, the, the, the name on the building has changed, and those people are now telling me that the prices are as such, and, and I, I don't have any and r- that's, control over that. And that's what I try to explain to customers. I'm like, look, I'm sorry, I get it, it's shitty, but times are different. It's different people. I'm like, we'll still treat you the same, and you'll still get the same quality of work, but. It's at a higher cost now. So <laughs> so imagine how many more phone calls you'd be able to answer if the phones that you guys had actually worked because the company made enough money to buy new phones. Yeah. And how or much if more there was just someone to answer the phones because everyone... Co- and where does that get- money come from? Because from my, the increased store rates. Because mm-hmm. our one of our cashiers is always sick. Oh get, get a healthier cashier. Yeah. <laughs> or what? She just... Can I just say... That today no. she came back Ta-da. from vacation, <laughs> Not ta-da. and she was so sick that she went home, and she was just on vacation. I've Fuck gotten sick on vacation, but but then I don't know. It's it seems like the well, Jose she, Cuervo well, she tec- flu to oh, me. The Jose Cuervo flu. I hear that's going around she, at times. She technically went on vacation, came back for a day, went on another vacation, came back and left after being there for a few hours because she was sick. But she did seem sick, but, and she drives so far. She drives from like Lancaster. Oh my God. Right. That's fucking insane. Yeah. Palmdale. I'd be sick too if I drove from Lancaster every day. Yeah. So yeah, borderline, I just, I, I got passed up again and I'm bummed. Sorry, baby. I'm sorry, Jake. And I tried to go elsewhere, but I'm going to stay for the time being because... The place where I wanted to go doesn't have an opening at the moment. It's not what I heard. With you? Mm. Says who? Mm. Moving on. How about that CX90 save? Wait, what do you mean? That's you mean what? Huh? what? From you or what? You Kira texted me a couple of days you ago. You can talk about that off air. Well, yeah, we can okay. talk about that off air. Mm. We can talk about the rest after the break. No, uh, no. we we can do one more right yeah. now. What if I don't want to? I, well, I'm telling you. Do one more. Fuck off. Ooh, taking, <laughs> taking control. Thank uh, you, what? Master. Hello? <laughs> what? Hello? Um, I, I mean, it's kind of, the problem is, is that one's kind of a longer story. Um, oh, so then pick something else. Then I'll How about some jokes? jokes? I've got a few of those. Do you? I do. My career. Are you ready? Why I'm did the ready. chicken cross the road? Because? Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> what? Because she's the one that actually got the no, answer right this time, and not you. Not, no, no. Why did the chicken oh, cross? The road? Oh, it's really. This a, is a different joke. Oh, but okay. Yeah, since you asked. Why no, did the it, chicken cross the road? No. <laughs> you said because. No, it was to get to the idiot. Knock knock. Knock knock. Who's there? <laughs> the chicken. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> It's so funny when you both know the joke. You had to be there. You did. Anyways, um, what do you call Pooh Bear's grandma? Pooh Nani. Oh. <laughs> God. <laughs> so fucking stupid. 
<laughs> Poonani. <laughs> it was the delivery for me. Poonani. <laughs> Well, hopefully they can join us after the break if they stop laughing. We'll, laughing. We'll open up when we come back from the break with a joke as well. But in the meantime, we have to thank our sponsors. Because we like them very much. We do. Thank you so much to Travis Ferris from Hit Distributing for hanging out with us last episode. That was great. That was supplying us fun. with Justice Brothers products and the best fucking pens in the world. Yes, which sir. Which my customers have already all stole. Mm. We'd also like to thank Nick Lowridge, who I saw Better recently. <laughs> Finally. Hello, Nick. Hi, nice Nick. to put a face to a name. Hi, Hello, Nick. Supplying us with Matco tools and also... Milwaukee. Milwaukee. Stop it, Eric. <laughs> Stop it, Eric. Thank you to Ray Moon from El Ranchito Taco Shop. That's the, the little ranch. The little ranch. Oh, he's, got the... gr- he's got great meats and treats and guac. I want to try his cream meat guac. In Lake Elsinore. Mm-hmm. I'll be back. Something smells delicious in here. Yeah, it does. I'm hungry. Jake, are you eating El Ranchito Taco Shop? <coughs> mm-hmm. That looks amazing. What did you order? <coughs> Tacos. Um, what? <coughs> guac. Jake, are you choking? Get out of my way, Michael. He needs a Heimlich. <coughs> Oh my god, I cannot believe this is happening again. Jake, you know you're allergic to avocado. One generic allergy medication later. Are you okay? <sighs> yeah. Almost dying is so worth it to have some El Ranchito creamy guac. <coughs> Thanks, Eric, for trying to save me, even though I wasn't joking. I know. I just wanted to get you from behind. <laughs> well, I guess this is a good time to tell everybody that if you're ever in the Inland Empire and are craving some great Mexican food, visit El Ranchito Taco Shop in Lake Elsinore. <laughs> Seriously, I follow them on Facebook and Instagram at Ranchito Elsinore. El Ranchito Taco Shop. More than just great Mexican food. I don't remember Rather be doing cocaine. <laughs> this is a family podcast. Do not Do not Wow, that was. Huh? Yeah. Holy fuck. Ew. Do it, Ali. You've been, you've been getting really good. Ew. Ew. Uh. Uh. Welcome back to Customer States Podcast. Thank you to all of our sponsors, and thank you to you, our listeners. We greatly appreciate it. And with that being said, Mikey's we love thirsty. You. I am. Would it, would everybody like to crack a beverage with us? I'll do a yes. Ding. Oh, hold on. I'll crack the can. Fuck yeah, daddy. Oh, oh. that's weird. <laughs> that was me. Is that how that works? Mm-hmm. Are you drinking a Bud Light over there? Oh, oh my God. God. Wow. No. Oh, do, I, do I have to edit that? No, no you my don't. God. Yes. Oh, my God. No, he does not. I approve. We've been given the gay card. We're in the clear. Yes. All right. Thank Any you. gays? I had authorization. The queer clear. The, the, yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, wait. Is I'm that gonna, Okay. I would have absolutely. Okay. I would have liked it better if you just would have been all like, "We're in the queer." Hmm. No, I mm, liked mine. I like them both. Okay, okay that's, that's fair. fine. <laughs> what the fuck just happened? Oh my god! This is what happens with marriage. Yeah. It's a glitch in the fucking matrix. I love it. We'll be oh, so. Oh. Uh, huh, uh, who? Oh. Hello, <gasps> Odie. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, do you know what the difference between a kidney bean and a chickpea is? Wait, what? wait. Yeah. <laughs> I a do. Kidney bean and a chickpea? Yeah. Yeah. I've never had a kidney bean on my. F- I've never had a chickpea on my face. <laughs> oh, <laughs> damn it! Wait. I ruined it. Kidney bean. I've never had a kidney bean on my face. I ruined it. Oh. oh. Can we rewind and do it again? <laughs> Can we edit that out? <laughs> <laughs> that was like my busty crust. You know what threw me off? <laughs> 
Mike saying he knew it. Because I, I did know it. And then, and then you ruining it for me was like, you I know. I know, fuck. And then I, got, I started to get in my head as soon as you said that. <laughs> like, this is the, my favorite part in the movie, and then the projector stops working. Like, That's Damn exactly it. what just happened. So fucking disappointing. Do you want to try it again? I'll, I'll let you try it again. What's the difference between a kidney bean and a chickpea? I don't know. What? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna leave it at that. Strike <laughs> two. <laughs> oh God! Fail. That was awesome. Uh, maybe I should just read my notes instead of trying to do it from memory. I've never had a kidney bean on my face. <laughs> oh, chickpea. <laughs> Jesus you Christ. have another one. I feel like you have to I do another one. I need to redeem myself. That was fucking lame. I'm so disappointed in myself. Yeah, I think we all agree. Yeah, I, I think Alaire's gonna know this one though. What do you call a fake noodle? An impasta. <laughs> <laughs> Don't fucking judge me, Mike. Son of a bitch. <laughs> That was better than the joke. I know. It was. We needed to lighten the mood. I'm just pa- practicing my witch laugh for spooky season. Witch yeah. laugh. Witch laugh. She's got the chin for it. Witch laugh, though. <gasps> Do- <laughs> <laughs> Wait. One, two, three. That was like the delay. It was like about three seconds. Honestly? Because it was my reaction. That yeah. Started. That's what it was. She would have caught See, it yeah. if I didn't react. See, she doesn't even. He says even- it to me all the fucking time. <laughs> you play along, too. No, that I'm is victimized. a fucking lie. And anyways, <laughs> she wouldn't even need to hear me say anything when Eric laughs the particular way <gasps> she knows I said something shitty. Mm. <laughs> and when your mom makes a certain face, I know when she says something face. to her too. Yes, yeah. she's like. Speaking of glitch in the matrix and all that, we will have been together for eleven years this year. Oh, congratulations! Been together for over a decade. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and she still puts up with me, which is surprising. And, and you vice still put versa. up with my chin and my laugh. So thank you. <laughs> Are you a good Jacob! witch? Are you a good witch <laughs> or a bad witch? Are you I a got good to witch? say that's what I appreciate about you. <laughs> Don't you come too close, kitties? I'll stab your eye out with my chin. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, suffocation. No breathing. No, don't start. I'm just going to do the rest of the podcast through the pillow. How's that? Is it just me or is her Give voice way me. easier to deal with? <laughs> <laughs> you guys, you guys, you guys. It's not a shrill. Oh, God. <laughs> Allie, you're the only thing that keeps us together. Yeah, you are the glue. You are the glue, 100%. I love you. <laughs> Ow, I love you. Apparently, glue has a lot of middle fingers in it. Well, that was karma. Karma. What did you do? Snapped it and went right on my nail. That was dumb. Yes, it was. so unfortunate. 11 years, you know, it's kind of like the transitive property. Um, So, moving on with... The Pythagorean theorem. Oh, goodness. That that was a funny conversation. Bernoulli's principle. How the fuck do I find the right angle of a triangle? (laughs) Anyways. (laughs) So... We're going to start back up with that CX-90 story. So, number one, the CX-90s. Oh, God, all fucking mighty. So, they're... Beautiful vehicles. They're, they yes, are. They're a very fucking pretty car. They're very fun to fucking drive. But their designs are fucky, to say the least. And they're kind of expensive. They're very expensive. But it's a mild hybrid vehicle. They're going to cost you money and the plug-ins even more. So... They're, the way that the CX-90 has the battery set up, because whether, you know, the mild hybrid or the plug-in, the regular battery that comes in the car, the 12-volt battery, it's got all types of fucking cables going to it, it's got protective covers, it's because everything's fucking wired to it, and et cetera, et cetera. So, there was a CX-90 with, oh, I'm sorry, rewind a tiny little bit, because this is kind of fun. <laughs> Yesterday at the end of the day, we had a... What was that? I think it was a, I think it was a Yukon. We'll just say it was a Yukon. Fairly new Yukon. Very nice. Whoa. Everything okay? No. Uh, Take your phone away from her. Why? Take your phone away from her. Why? Do it. Why? Never mind. Okay. We had a, (laughs) we had a, we had a Yukon that pulled into the drive. 
That's not even bad. He's taking pictures of my chin. Oh, there's three pictures there. Oh, gotcha. With the witch emoji at the bottom. So. <laughs> oh, I didn't even see the witch emoji. <laughs> So we had a Yukon scream into our service drive, blow past the service office, what? and kind of go into where we parked the customer cars behind oh, over by the base. Is Grand Theft Auto? So, no. And everybody in the office is kind of like, what the hell is that? And we all start to kind of go out of the office to see what's going on. And all, all of a sudden, this dude kind of gets pushed out of the passenger seat of this Yukon. And the lady who is driving just starts going off. Fuck you, you piece of yelling, like, gnarly stuff. How did I, I played, not know I this? I played this exact same level in GTA 4. I'm, <laughs> seriously, how is this not Grand Theft Auto? So the guy gets out, and he's just kind of standing there looking at it, taking the type of thing. The taking lady it, is yeah. freaking the fuck out, and he's just trying to walk away, and she does this horrible 19-point turn <laughs> while she's still screaming at this guy. Starts to pull out of that area, still screaming at this guy, and then she peels out of our driveway, bottoms out the Yukon by how much she hit the, you know, the well, that, that, that driveway is fucked though, and so just peels out and leaves. So we're all like, Jesus, what the fuck was that? The guy kind of disappears. Later on, one of the salespeople comes in, and she comes to me and she goes, "I've got a problem. I need you guys' help. I'm trying to sell a CX90." Okay, find out the guy who was getting chewed to bits by the lady is the guy who wants to buy the cx90 so i don't know if this is for the wife or him or whatever the fuck is or she doesn't want so him to buy it now to i don't know now to circle back about how we're saying the design with the cx90 she goes the car is in the annex here are the keys she's like we can't get it to jump I'm like okay they let the car sit too long Battery's dead. Yeah. They don't run them. That's one thing I've always had a fucking heart with. Every it. fucking dealer. Okay, then I don't then shit. I don't feel so bad. Yeah, perfect. No. Then that's yeah, fine. Oh God. Every okay. dealer. Yeah, perfect. Every awesome. Every car. So she goes, I'm going to lose this deal. Can you please help? So I was pretty much done with my day. I'm like, you know what? Screw it. Sure. A little bit of good karma. Why the fuck not? Well, they expect you to do it again. That's the problem. Let's see if they can drag me out of that office. Um, either way. So I the jumper is already in at the annex the location, yeah. at the location of the car. So I go, the way that the battery is set up for this is the, it is tucked underneath the cowl right, right. at the bottom of the fucking windshield right? where you can't really access shit. I mean, it is yeah. very tucked back there. So, you know, the negative terminal has a ground wire mm -hmm. that's bolted to the body so that you can get to the negative. No problem. Yeah. But then comes the problem. Like an escape or a focus or something like that for four people. But then comes the problem of the positive terminal. So the cover of how Does this... Does it have a good attitude? <laughs> so the cover to this battery and the way that it is, it... <laughs> Fuck both of you. <laughs> <laughs> so the way that the terminal is, is it is completely hidden by the cover and everything that is clamped to it. Mm -hmm. So you can't clamp, and besides, the cover is the plastic cover, protective yeah. cover. You can't remove it, really. You can, but you have to remove the battery, and then you can get that cover fully off. I'm sure there's a way you could finagle it, but either way... Eric can get that cover off, no problem. I've got you covered. There, There is <laughs> a little tiny access door that, that flips up <laughs> that gives you access to that terminal. However, you can't clamp that terminal. It's not wide enough to get the fucking clamp in there. So the charger or the jumper that we have luckily has really thin alligator clips. Mm. Oh, okay. But okay. you're right. I still had too much problems. And all that they give you to grab onto is a little 10 mil nut. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's nice. it. Just a tiny little, little tiny so thing. So I had to. You have to like kind of hold it there while someone else yes, starts the car. So I was there by myself. So I had to pry off the front of that cover. Pinch it on that 10 mil and then use the tension from that cover to, to hold, hold that there yeah. while I start the car. I'd be getting like wood shims. And like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I start the car. Number one, it sounds like shit. It's just, it does not sound good. It It's feeling very sick. Mm. Check engine light is on. Mild hybrid system deactivation. Have vehicle inspected. TPMS lights flashing, low gas is flashing, everything. Of course, low voltage, everything's going to shit. Yeah, correct. Kidding. Low voltage, everything's going to shit its pants. It's fine. So I call the salesperson. I'm like, hey, I got it jumped. And she goes, oh, my God, I don't know how you did it, but it doesn't matter. And I go, she goes, can you pull it over here? I'm like, well, there's a, Funny story. There's a lot of effing codes, and it needs gas. So she goes, okay, I'm going to grab you a gas slip. 
go to the gas station that's on the corner, give them this and, you know, fill it up. And I go, I don't know if this will make it. It's so low. And plus, I'm pretty sure it was in limp mode anyways. And she goes, we'll try. And if you get stuck, just call me. So I go and I tell. What's she going to do? I don't know. Doesn't matter. Finish the story. Come pick me up and get a tow truck. I don't fucking know. So I pull out of the annex and I'm going my grandma speed 10 and 2 with the flashers on at 20 miles per hour because that's all it'll let me do. <laughs> and I'm just watching that gaslight just blink right uh-huh. in my fucking face. I'm like, ah, I could fucking feel it. And I took a wrong turn because I went to the backside <laughs> of the that little bit of um, uh, the housing that's uh-huh. right over there. That you can go around the back, hop onto hand and come up to where that gas station is on your right before you turn on to... I didn't have to flip a bitch. Mm-hmm. Oh, either way. Um, so I made a wrong turn and I start to flip around and I'm going into this person's driveway that's kind of tilted down and the car starts to bog uh, because fuck. the fucking fuel throws to the front of the tank. So I throw it in reverse and I'm feathering it, feathering it. And it's just barely enough to get me out. I get there, I get gas. <clears throat> We get it into the tech stall. We find out there is an open recall on it, which mm. is the cross uh. pedest- the cross pedestrian alert. So we get that done. That's an easy one, though. That is an easy one. And thankfully, <laughs> the battery charger that we have through Mazda has insanely sharp, very pointed alligator clamps. Oh, I know so that about. so that was easy. That yeah. hooked on no problem to that little ten mil bolt. It's like yeah. I will hold on for dear life. So she comes and she's like, "We clear the codes, everything." And she goes, "Is it ready?" And I go, no, this thing needs a good couple hour charge or else this customer is going to take it and it's going to be flashing lights or the minute they turn it off, they're screwed. So she goes, well, the guy was going to drive it to Palm Springs tonight. Can't he just do that? And by the time he gets there, it'll be fine. I'm like, don't risk it. So we plug it in, do the charge, coming in the morning, starts on its own, test the battery to make sure that the battery wasn't bad just to be safe, clear all the codes. And she got to take her car and she drove it to the guy in Palm Springs. Oh, shit. Yeah. So, saved the sale. Customer was happy. Yay. And you C- saved the day. Save the knee. And the CX90 is Ooh-wee. just, yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Goodness. It also took a hundred and f- almost $140 to fill the tank. Oh, yeah, you guys. Like, what was that? Six. 30. I, I paid like six fifty something this morning. Holy shit. Six hundred and fifty dollars? Oh, no. you mean no. per gallon. Yeah, yeah. Per gallon. gallon. Yeah. Yeah. Welcome to California. Yeah. It's pretty bad everywhere. Even mom's paying like upwards of five, which in the middle of fucking nowhere, Colorado is BFE. Yeah. yeah. No, that's BFC. Oh, oh Colorado. Good. Yeah. Okay, fair enough. Good point. Okay. Who's the nice kid? Oh, that's me. Well, no, I have a story about the nice kid. You are a uh, nice kid. Uh, <clears throat> <clears throat> oh, rest in peace, Paul Rubens. Oh yeah. Okay, so um, I speaking of gas, I know how much it was this morning, or I know how much it was because I filled up this morning, and I get to the gas <laughs> station approximately six o'clock in the morning. It's dark out at this. Time it's, of year. it's starting to get to be that time of year where yeah. I'm waking up and I'm like, where's the sun? Oh, I, I love it. I love it. I, I do love you? it. Oh, yeah. I oh, it's so good. Do you really? You do? So, so I have a hard time waking up. After I get used to it, I prefer it more. But I have a hard it, time staying asleep. Oh, I see. Mm. I don't have that problem. So, drive to the gas station, pull in, no one there. And half the pumps are shut down because of doing construction, which I hate doing anyway, but it's on my way to work. So I'm, you know, minding my own business. I've got my earbud in, which I typically don't like to do, but I'm listening to our local radio show, which has a very special thing that plays on Thursdays. Heidi and Frank? Yeah. Yeah, it's specifically... Oh, it's the... Um, who's Going to Chris, Help. Christian Han? No, what, Who's, who's going, going to Help. Oh, I haven't heard oh, that I one. Oh, I don't know that. Oh, yeah. Who's Going to Help uh, plays on Thursday mornings. Anyway, great. Uh, it's a great bit that they do. And all, like, all of a sudden I hear, good morning. You know, I, I, I see a like a silver uh, Honda pull up and I hear, you know, I, I see some kid get out of the car and I hear good morning. I'm like, somebody like greeted me. What? Like, dude, it's like six. <laughs> How much do they pay you? Yeah, <laughs> what are you doing? I'm like, 
Good morning. What do you want? Hi, welcome to Walmart. I love I, you. I fully expected him to be like, dude, I'm just like trying to get to my homie's uh-huh. house and need like 20 bucks for a gal. Do you have any cash? Like, like nothing, you know. It wasn't anything bad, but he he literally just said good morning to me and walked inside and went and got gas or and Red Bull or something like that. So anyway, comes back out and he starts you know pu- uh, putting uh, pumping gas in his car and I see he's got a snap on sweatshirt on. I'm like, oh, okay. So you know, pull out the earbud and start making a little bit of chit chat. I'm like, so where do you work at? And he says, oh, I work at a dealership over here in the auto mall. I said, oh, that's cool. How long you been there? He's like, oh, you know, I just I kind of just started, you know, I was, uh, I was a porter for a long time, but then they said that, uh, that I can move into Lubrac and I'm like, I'm really enjoying that. I'm like, Oh really? Like you, you want to be like a full-time like mechanic? He's like, yeah, yeah. I'm like, are you doing your training? And I, this is a, a 100% full true story. And I gave him our podcast business card. So I'm hoping oh. that he reaches out to us when he hears this That's and I, I'm hoping that he listens to it first of all. But anyway, thank you. Nice kid. So this is a, uh, the original f- title of this I wanted to put was a uh, nice young fellow at 6am, <laughs> okay. but it was too much to write on the whiteboard. Oh, you had it. Anyways, you it takes lazy. too much time. What I, yes, I am lazy. So anyway, so, you know, I'm asking him about a certification. We'll get you some more crayons. And he's so saying, you can... yeah, you know, I'm, I'm working. I'm, 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 I'm focusing on like trying to get certified to do this stuff. I'm like, dude, keep at it. Like what time do you start? He's like, oh, well, like the shop kind of opens up at seven o'clock. But like, you know, I just kind of like to get there early. I'm like, oh God, it's a mic in the making. Dude, it's <laughs> 603. What are you doing? He's like, well, you know. What like, are I, you I, doing, <laughs> dude? <laughs> I'm the one that opens the fucking shop. So <laughs> I have a lot of work to do in the morning anyway. So I'm telling him, I'm like, dude, that's awesome, man. Like, just like keep on it. Like, and you know, like it's, it's nice to see young, younger people that still have the drive that is required for this sort of industry. You know, I didn't want to like give my name or information or anything like that. And you know, he, Went, went about his way and I finished pumping my gas and got back in my car. I was Did like, your you know shirt what? that said Mike from Ford not give it away? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, I, I, I don't. I don't typically wear my name badge out in public uh, outside of the dealership, rather. Um, not that I'm embarrassed, but I just typically don't do it. It was always very like jarring for me when I would forget to take my name tag off when I worked at the deli. And then I'd be like in the grocery store and someone would be like, oh, hi, Allie. And I'd be like. How do you know me? Who are you? <laughs> well, despite having a podcast, like I do like my anonymity, but you, you know. served me a pastrami on rye. Yeah. And it was fantastic. <laughs> Flat meat. But uh, yeah, so I, uh, I ended up walking back and giving that kid uh, our uh, business card for the podcast. And I told him like, check us out here and here. This is how you can email me. Like if you buy a t-shirt. You know, <laughs> well, buy I mean, he just Shameless started plug. out. Shameless he just started plug. out. But hopefully, uh, hopefully he listens and hopefully he stays on his path because there there is the potential to make money in this. Good luck, so. good luck, nice kid at six a.m. Yeah, mm-hmm. he, he's got the right work work ethic, whether it's meth or you know whether <laughs> it's meth. <laughs> what no, if he listens <laughs> to this? I hope Don't he listens to it. That listen. was a joke. Mike's an that asshole. Was obviously a joke. <laughs> Just I kidding. was I was up at that time in the morning. I certainly him a don't meth do meth. I, yeah, I was. So, I mean, like it was a joke. It was a joke. It was a joke. You know what else is a joke? How to oh, cope. What? My Customer business. Surveys. Oh. oh. I oh thought my you were going to tell an actual joke. Yeah. Well, and this one's fairly short, but there you always know the people who have never worked a customer service job a single day in their fucking life. And it's just with the changeover of ownership and the whole pardon our dust and the growing pains and the everything like that. And it's the same song and dance of don't shoot the messenger. We're just trying to do our fucking job. I have been decimated this month on customer surveys. Minus 100s as far as the fucking eye can see. All for the same shit. Riders are great. Service was great. Nice people. But... No car washes right now because we don't have a team. We don't do car washes either. Don't and, and we're f- trying to figure that out. We're not personally going to do car washes anymore. It completely wipes away all chances of liability for this fucking scratch was never here anymore, which is fucking great. Not just that. It's an EPA issue as well. Whatever. It just takes care of a bunch of issues. So they don't wash my car anymore. There isn't coupons anymore. This and this isn't anymore. This is how it used to be 20 fucking years ago. 
or this is what I've gotten used to 20, you know, for the past 20 years. Now it feels like I'm just going into Jiffy Lube or any other dealership. So, yes, Mike, the floor is yours. When are they leveling that property? Like our side? The, the whole thing and just starting over. Well, our side will get leveled at some point because they have to to keep the Mazda. Well, you're good. So oh, what right. I because I, I had already thought about this. Like if I was going to like take over that property, I already thought like, OK, so you level one side and move everybody into like bungalows and occupy the other side. And it bungalows. sucks for a while. Well, that's what happened when we did our remodel. They're called trailers. But that, but <laughs> yeah, <laughs> bungalows. no, my my most of my family <laughs> lives in trailers and they're mobile. So, uh, <laughs> their homes, mobile homes. Mm -hmm. Is that shit a triple wide? <laughs> <laughs> we can't afford that. <laughs> um, but yeah, like you should definitely, it's going to happen. It, it should, it should be a, the entire site should be leveled and either you guys shut down for a couple months and just plan for that in the budget or. I would like, love to fucking shut down for a couple of months and plan for it. Or, or, or find some other place to, to have it as a temporary workspace. But like that whole thing needs to be releveled and rethought into one conglomerate property I've that seen, encompasses I've seen the two brands if they still want to do that. I've seen... <laughs> Usually Are you okay? No. Is that... Is that... Is that pretty walk? Are you drinking? Jake, do you need CPR? <laughs> 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 that it, it will or i've seen the the general plans of what it's supposed to look like or how mazda wants us to redesign it they're all pretty similar with a few you know here and there's oh you know what i i didn't really think about that because each store kind of looks like correct it has to look like that brand store so we have two different brands yep. in one location it, they, each store has to be its own correct. separate store correct that's horrible so the redesign looks really nice, but it's true. It's all going to have to be fucking leveled, des like just demolished and ground up. And we'll either be working out of trailers. I don't know where the hell they will put it because there's no fucking room to do anything as is right now. But we'll see. I still feel like that that it would be much better to focus on one manufacturer and just make one giant company, like like one giant store that focuses on one manufacturer so, so Ali, what, what side is more profitable? Mazda for customer pay, VW for, for warranty. warranty. No, yeah. overall. Mazda. Would you, can you stop okay. eating macadamia nuts for like, a second? <laughs> okay, so. The, like, and you don't have to be, I mean. Volkswagen has the potential if it's run continuously the way <clears throat> it's being run right now, like where it's going up and up and up. Volkswagen will make more money, hmm. but it's a shit. right now it's Mazda because the Volkswagens cost more and their service costs more and they break down more. So don't in my it. opinion, so Volkswagen, don't buy a Volkswagen, I don't drive a Volkswagen. Once German engineering. Didn't yeah. you have one? Never. Never. Wait, didn't you guys have a CC? Oh, wait, no. no. Nope. Oh, fuck no. No, me doing so much Volkswagen warranty is part of the reason why I chose to drive a Mazda. Yep. I would love a CC or an Arteon. The Arteons oh, are nice. Oh, the Arteons so <laughs> pretty. So sexy. It oh was so God. slept on, too, but it's kind of like a weird price point for a Volkswagen. Yes. It's like, what are those start I at? Wanted... Like 60 grand? 60, 70. They're really expensive. Ugh, Jesus and it's Christ, like, for a I wanna, beetle? I want to drive. <laughs> it's not a beetle. Well, it's the company that makes one. <laughs> <laughs> Everything is. It's basically an Audi Everything with Volkswagen is a beetle. badging. <laughs> it's beautiful. I know what it is. It's, it's a nice car. So. Uh, uh, ooh. Uh, well, and the ID4s are like really big and popular. You see them everywhere right Piles now. Piles of shit. Uh huh. Popular piles of shit. Well, all the recalls. So, <laughs> Spoon Man. You know what's <laughs> wild is when an ID4 needs all its recalls all at once. It's like a six thousand dollar ticket. Holy fuck! Isn't dude. that if it needs everything? Because right. it because the doesn't customer never brought it in. Everything. Yes. Well, the, you know, there's different um, levels to the like. There's inspections there's different in the levels recall, to this so shit. sometimes you don't need the full repair, the battery replacement, or what's whatever. Your, what's your longest paying recall? It's the ninety-seven P three, okay. and that is the ID four 
um, battery management software update, and it can take upwards of eight hours. Holy fuck. All like actual time. Is that between both manufacturers? It's the longest one. Well, by far. By far. By far. Do, wait, do you guys have an electric car? Mm-hmm. Well, the, the MX30. The, yeah, that the, oh, that, that, that one just came out though. The, right? Well, yeah. the MX30 came out two years ago, but there's like none of them popular. anymore. And then we've got the hybrids. Right next to the diesel. Uh, you see X5. Well, diesel that was CX5. A, that was a huge fucking flop in the U.S. markets. Oh, my God. Yes, Mike. So can I ask another question about like the, the dealership change? Because mm-hmm. it's just like absolutely fascinating to me. If you like if they if the people that bought the company were to say like, OK, well, we're only going to have one manufacturer and we're going to turn this entire property into one I know the answer. Property Mazda. A. What would you want it to be? Mazda. Volkswagen. Oh. VW, huh? Because if Christos. it was just Mazda, <laughs> I wouldn't have a job. Words, apparently. Why? Because they just don't have as many warranties. No, as many like recalls and stuff like that, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, but if you I'm not joking you when I say I do 20 not minimum me? Volkswagen <laughs> warranty repairs or recalls a day. In Volkswagen I need and two in, in Mazda. Okay, <clears throat> ten times as much. Fair. Yep. And I think that our current um, <clears throat> corp owner would stick with Mazda because they've never done Volkswagen before. This is their first Volkswagen acquisition, so I I just I think they would stick with what they knew. Mm. Yeah, makes sense. Yep. And how would you feel about working? Like, because obviously, you know, um, Ali, you you work for both sides. Like, they're two physical, separately, like separate physical stores and brands. But you work at both places. Jake only works at one place. How mm-hmm. would you feel about working in one giant place? I mean, like, it would well, be I completely think, different. Look I different. don't think that um, it would meet brand standard to do that because. We we used to have the service writer shirts say, you know, Volkswagen and Mazda on them. And that was against brands. Anything that was combined with the two brands, you could not have. Well, so I imagine like that combining Ford them in one building. Or something maybe correct. Even. Right. Or, or, you know, in the Dodge Dodge Chrysler, Chrysler Jeep. Jeep yeah, Ram, of the Mopar products, yeah. you know. No Fiat. No oh, Fiat. that's right. We do not service Fiat. Fix it again, Tony. Um, so I don't think that any of the manufacturers, unless it's that situation, would be okay with sharing a building with another brand. It's so much lost potential. Like that's a, a it's it's a small, it's kind of a small property, but it's just a lot of like wasted space. But I kind of get baby. it. I kind of. I know. I know. Well, you got rid of one tree. Yeah. True. Oh my god. Because it almost killed someone. That's so much wasted space. So in case you're newish here, there we have a um, giant oak tree on had. our had a giant oak tree on the Mazda side, which and was beautiful. And I do not advocate cutting down trees for no reason. It, it was dead. It was yeah. I know. Oh, it was okay. actually that's, that's why we were able to remove it. it. Yeah. But it almost legitimately killed a family. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so it was very, very, very old and it was just a huge liability. And so now there's a huge plot of wood chips that is we can't turn underused into, space, which we can't use as a part or to, that we can't use to change and extend the parking lot, because according to the city that we live in, it has to be used as landscape. What? Yes. Yeah. I guarantee you. I mean, so that's something that the current that the current owners of of because I don't know who owns the property, but that's something that the current owners of the company are going to have to deal with 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 the property owners and the city because there has to be a like there's going to be a massive remodel that of that place. It's got to happen. The previous gotta owners happen. own the land. Yep. Really? Uh-huh. So smart. Yep. Yep. Just like uh, your oh, yeah. your guys. Yeah. <clears throat> My, yeah. Yep. So yeah, <clears throat> fun times. Mm-hmm. Well, I, I can't wait for the next update of this um, uh, crazy drama. And next week we'll have to talk about how do you cope because that's going to be. Oh, can I just say no. I no. send in your stories? How do you cope? 
Yes, please do because oh, that's going to yeah, be something. I have a story for we, you, but yeah, yeah uh, and and yeah, well, send in your stories of like how do you cope with There's a stressful situation, or um, you know, you're not having a good mental health day, as some people would will refer to it as. Yeah. So um, I just want to say really quickly that um, it is super stressful, and I've been working a fuck ton of overtime and i'm making so much money (laughs) then it's gonna go away and i'm gonna be sad well and that's when you ask for a raise bank it yeah if i could make my overtime time i'm making 35 dollars an hour pretty much for like over 10 hours a week you want to give a shout out to albert before we go thanks again babe we really appreciate it um, I saw him. Your t- I saw him last uh, weekend for his mother-in-law's birthday dinner. Oh, and he oh, well, said, "Congratulations!" The time before that, that I saw him, he forgot to give me the drinks then. So he's been sitting on them for a while, oh. but uh, insisted that. Well, they're in good condition for you know being sat on for so long. I know. So thank you again. We really appreciate you. Thank you for listening. Thank you. We're glad you enjoy us. I had the mango flavor and it was amazing. I had the pineapple something or other. Pineapple. Mm-hmm. Any gays. Well, that's uh I think that takes us on to our ending credits here. Thank you again to Travis Ferris from Hit Distributing, supplying us with that wonderful JB eighty from Justice Brothers. So good. So good. Thank you, Nick. Matko, Milfaki, and everything in between. Nick Lowridge, to be exact. <clears throat> yeah, thank you. And thank you also to Ray Moon from El Ranchito Taco Shop in Lake Elsinore, supplying us with burritos, tacos, and creamy guac. That mm. could potentially kill Jacob. Yes. But he sacrificed himself. He he's, did that one he's time. He's actually I'm micro- slowly I'm microdosing. Just say, I'm microdosing. I'm getting to the point where I can have like a spoonful and not itch. That's a separate podcast. Okay. <laughs> Microdosing. Ah, uh, yes. Uh, it's slow burn. Joe Rogan! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck that fool. Yeah. All right. You can find us um, at customerstatespodcast.com where you can buy our merch, see us, learn more about us, listen to the episodes. You can find us on YouTube, customers by uh, searching okay. Customer States Podcast. What is happening? <laughs> um, our email you guys know where to find us and how to email us okay? at gmail.com which also evening. just happens to be our paypal we need to figure out how to cut this short because some of these people knows. i like the, the music, music still playing everybody over. fucking knows but I, I, i'm trying to fill the music to it we anyways. have like two seconds uh, left I, I like how i did it Three so i did too that was fucking brilliant. how did you do it I just did. It's all like, you know, you can find us everywhere or you can just type in Google Customer States Podcast and you everything can... will come up. All right. Well, we can just end it now. No. <laughs> <laughs> That's, that, that was pretty funny, right? That was good. Well right. done. <laughs> I was going to say, actually, I don't mind that. That was fun. Actually, that was good. Actually, I'm really sad that you ended it because I was going to No, end it. you weren't. Wait. No, you weren't. Wait, don't. Well, I'll don't. Do it next time. Don't stop. Don't the, bring the, it up. Wait, I'm not the, the, this is this well, is still live for the it. video. Yeah, I this know. is still live for the video. I no, can I like the video can go as long as you want. Penis. Well, oh, now it can't. <laughs> Hi, this is Mike Sarah from Customer States. Matco Tools is one of the best tool companies in the industry, and Nick Lowridge is one of the best Matco tool distributors. Nick can get me anything I need for the shop or for at home. From oil drain pans to beef jerky, Nick's got what I need on tap. Nick works in the Thousand Oaks, California area, and you too can get whatever you need by calling him at 805-796-7323. And if you're not in that area, call him anyway and tell him you heard about him from the Customer States Podcast. And then you can hop on to uh, matcotools.com and find a Matco Tools distributor near you. Matco Tools. Service. Trust. Results.